Hello everyone and welcome to another video. A successful theme park needs a lot of rides and stalls and lots of pathways connecting them. Or does it? What if we weren't allowed to build any path? Can you beat the original 21 Rollercoaster Tycoon scenarios using just the path that's already there? Despite all my experience, if I succeed with this, this will be the first time I have ever beaten the last couple of scenarios in Rollercoaster Tycoon 1, as I was never good enough to get there when I was young. The first scenario is the classic Forest Frontiers, which has the goal of getting 250 guests and a park rating of 600 at the end of year 1. This immediately provides the challenge of putting all those 250 guests on a very little path. What's even worse is that a big portion of this path is unfit for building rides next to, as the park fence is too close to it. On the remaining bit we can fit about 5 spiral slides and nothing more, but the narrow bit does have space for some stalls. Of course we also need some staff and here I'm immediately reminded of a very annoying feature in Rollercoaster Tycoon 1, which is that handyman mow grass by default. I will have to remember to turn this off for every handyman in this entire challenge. And now we just have to wait, which will take quite a while, but luckily we can speed up the game with cheat engines so that it doesn't take me 3 hours per scenario to do this challenge. After a few months it seems that we're stuck at about 140 guests and the park rating is going down. This is because of overcrowding and there is nothing we can do to solve that. What we can do though is hire entertainers. The overcrowding complaints will stay, but they themselves don't have any effect other than lowering happiness and it's the lower happiness that causes the rating to go down and the guests to leave. Entertainers make guests happier, so with enough of them we can counteract any negative effects from overcrowding. We can quickly see this working, as in July we already reached 230 guests with a great park rating, but then it plateaus again and in late August still nothing has changed. With the deadline of October 31st rapidly approaching we need to do something about this. One great trick that we can use here is that all opened rides will attract guests whether they can be accessed or not, so all we have to do is build 4 junior coasters and that should be enough. And it indeed is enough, as before the end of September we have already reached 330 guests, which is 80 more than the goal. At the deadline we even have nearly 500 guests, which just shows you how effective those coasters have been. And not only have we beaten Forest Frontiers without building any path, but we've also done it without advertising, which is a nice extra challenge for this video, so from now on ads are off limits too. The next scenario is Dynamite Dunes, which has a lot more paths to work with and even already has a roller coaster. We do need this path, as the goal has gone up from 250 to 650 guests, but on the other hand we also have triple the time to get there. We shouldn't waste any time though, so we'll get started with building as many spiral slides as we can, which turns out to be 20. After having built some stalls and hired some staff, the waiting starts. It looks like this is easily enough, as in April year 2 we passed the goal of 650 guests, so from now on all we have to do is keep it running well enough to keep the guests in the park. Every now and then I need to hire more staff to keep the guests happy, but other than that there's not much to it. By the end of year 3 we have about 920 guests, easily beating the scenario. And on to the third scenario, which is Leafy Lake. This one has more paths than Dynamite Dunes and a lower guest call of only 500, so it's going to be quite trivial. We don't have the spiral slide available here, so we're gonna use the ferris wheel instead. Despite it being easy, I did learn one very interesting thing during this scenario. In Rollercoaster Tycoon 1 you can charge for both the park entrance and the rides at the same time, but if guests have already paid for the entrance, the maximum they'll want to pay for the rides gets cut in four. That's nothing new to me and since I've been making all my money from the park entrance the rides need to be very cheap or even free which is a lot of work to do for dozens of rides. However the game is quite clever and does the work for you. 
all ride types have a default ticket price, such as 1 euro for the ferris wheel. But if you charge for the park entrance, all your rides will be free by default instead, preventing the issue of guests finding your rides too expensive. This is an absolutely genius feature that I had no idea existed. After having built 50 ferris wheels of which I didn't need to change the ticket price, it's time to sit back, relax and watch the guests come in. I also built a nice big wooden coaster on the lake because why not? It turns out this scenario was indeed very easy, as at the end of year 3 we have over 1500 guests in the park at over 180,000 euros in the bank. It's starting to look like going passless is the superior way of playing, but let's not get ahead of ourselves as there are some real difficult scenarios coming up. Not the next one though, as Diamond Heights has a park value goal. Instead of a certain number of guests, we need to have a park value of 20,000 euros at the end of year 3. For those of you used to Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, keep in mind that in RCT1 the park value is about 10 times as low, so this would roughly be equivalent to a 200,000 park value goal there. To get to that value, all we need to do is build a bunch of shuttle loops, and they don't even need to be open. Rides contribute to the park value based on their stats, so as soon as you've tested the ride, it will contribute, and if the ride is never opened, it never ages, so the contribution doesn't even go down over time. 20 shuttle loops gets us to over 40,000 park value, which is more than double what we need, so we're set to easily beat Diamond Heights. One thing the dueling coasters are famous for is crashing, and that indeed happened, and incredibly quickly. In May year 1, Agoraphobia crashed and killed 14 people, which doesn't matter as the goal is just park value and not park rating. We could drown 10,000 guests and still beat it, and we do indeed easily beat it after 3 years. And now we have arrived at Evergreen Gardens, a scenario feared by many. It has a massive path network that will cause guests to get lost and kill your park rating. The recommended strategy is to block off the path until you need it, but that's easy, so of course we're not going to do that. I'm just going to build 100 merry-go-rounds and we'll just see what happens. The goal is 1000 guests in 4 years, and considering what happened in Leafy Lake, this should be possible. And it indeed is possible. While we are getting messages about lost guests near the deadline, it doesn't affect our park rating too badly, and we easily beat the scenario with over 2000 guests in the park. On to Bumbly Beach, which is a bit of a breather with a 750 guest goal for which you have only 2 years. Instead of just spamming one ride, I decided to build at least one of everything, including a big fat wooden coaster. The pre-built coaster Big Dipper is just like the dueling coasters in Diamond Heights, famous for crashing, but I guess we got lucky as it didn't crash during the run. With not as many rides, we don't smash the goal like we did in previous parks, but with nearly 900 guests, we do comfortably beat it. It may seem that all the parks with a lot of paths already built will be a walk in the park, but Trinity Islands proves otherwise. I wasn't expecting anything weird, so I just built a whole bunch of twists, hired a lot of staff, and hit fast forward. It seemed to go well, and we hit 700 out of the 750 required guests for the goal within one of the three allotted years, but then it all went wrong. The guest count started to go down, so I assumed I simply hadn't built enough rides and built some more. This seemed to work and we got to 740 guests, but then it again stagnated and didn't get to 750. I built even more rides in the form of merry-go-rounds in case anyone found the twist too intense or anything, and I also built some stalls, but it still didn't work and the park rating started to go down really fast and finally I found the issue. A lot of guests were lost on this island in the back and couldn't find the exit. Everyone always complains about the path in Evergreen Gardens, but it's Trinity Island that's the real problem. To solve it, I removed everything from this island and blocked it off. A little while later, we see all the sad guests walk out of the park and the rating shoots back up immediately. This should work now, right? We have dozens of rides from three different types, stalls and a whole load of staff. But nope, the guest count once again stops at roughly 700. It wasn't until I built a shuttle loop that it finally got over 700, and a few months later we beat the scenario with about 900 guests. 
This was unexpectedly difficult and that's not a good sign this early in the game. From a difficult one to an easy one as Katie's world is another park value scenario this time requiring a value of 15,000 euros. 40 broken down swinging ships and 2 crashed coasters are barely enough to comfortably beat it. Roller coasters really do crash very easily in RCT1. I mostly play Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 nowadays where it doesn't happen nearly as much but most coasters that have a reputation for crashing have indeed actually crashed so far. Next up is the iconic Dinky Park or Pokey Park depending on which version you have. A very small park barely large enough to fit a shuttle loop and somehow you have to get 10,000 park value in 2 years. You can buy extra land but we're not going to do that, no we're going to research thrill rides until we research either the rotodrop or the launched freefall. Weirdly enough the first ride we get is the log flume which I thought was a water ride but apparently water rides are thrill rides for research purposes in Roller Coaster Tycoon 1. A bit later we unlock the launched freefall or as it was called in this game the WOW belly. The trick with these is to just build them up stupidly high and get insane intensity ratings on them which makes them give a lot of park value. The problem is that the height limit of the game in Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 is quite low so these can only get to 7 intensity on downward launched mode which is far from extreme. This doesn't really matter though as a bunch of them still easily beat the scenario with almost twice the required park value. The 10th scenario is Aqua Park which unsurprisingly is a park that has a bunch of water rides. I'm not going to destroy this unique culture they have going on so I'm going to only build more water rides until we have enough to get us to the goal of 900 guests in 3 years. After I had built enough rides I left the game running and in the meantime I did the washing up and took a shower. When I came back it was June year 3 and predictably the dinghy slide had crashed. There were also a bunch of other problems with the park, mainly litter and as a result vandalism as I didn't hire enough handymen before letting it run. Fixing that restores the park rating and soon after the guest count will go up again to stay above the required 900. The pathing gave a little bit of a problem as the mechanic assigned to the pre-built river rapids couldn't find it and was stuck on the other side of the park. Luckily that was the only issue and no guests got lost. Near the end of the scenario you can see that there are a few dinghies stuck halfway the dinghy slide and they get pushed on by the next one. Slowly more and more dinghies accumulate until every single boat on the right is stuck there. And a little bit later we handily beat the scenario. And from here we move on to Millennium Mines which requires 800 guests and with frankly very little path available. To keep guests off the paths as much as possible the first thing we do is build as many flat rides as we can and also a coaster with good capacity. After that the strategy is the same as Forest Frontiers, hire a load of entertainers, build some inaccessible rides to increase the soft guest cap and hope for the best. For the soft guest cap I'm using simple wooden coaster circles. They will have terrible stats but rides don't need good stats to increase the soft guest cap so they will have the same effect as a massive wooden coaster would. This strategy works quite well as near the end of year 1 we already hit 800 guests and there are still 2 years left. This doesn't last very long though as quite quickly the guest count starts decreasing again. I wasn't exactly sure what was causing this but I noticed I didn't have any stalls so I built a fry stall, a drink stall and a toilet. A bit later I also found another issue and that is that the tiny wooden coasters are breaking down all over the place. Rides only attract guests when they're open so once they break down the soft guest cap decreases. And the annoying thing is that they cannot be fixed as mechanics require a path tile next to the exit building to fix it and I can't build any path. My only option is to delete and rebuild them of which there will be a lot in this scenario. Eventually I decided to just build tons of these rides so that even if a bunch break down it's not an issue. This works incredibly well as at the end of year 3 we have over 2000 guests. It's completely ridiculous how overcrowded your paths can be as long as you have some entertainers telling the guests to be happy. 
Up next is Carts and Coasters, which unsurprisingly is a park with two go-kart tracks and two wooden coasters. I love the naming scheme for the woodies. One is called Big Wood Chip and not being creative enough to come up with a second name, the other one is called Bigger Wood Chip. The park has loads of paths with space next to it, so we can easily build enough accessible spiral slides to get the 1000 guests we need. 36 of them later, the park is ready to be sped up. Or is it? Things seem to be going well, but at around 900 guests the park rating is going down and all the notifications about lost guests make it no secret what the cause is. It turns out that this long exit path is the issue as guests keep thinking that the park exit is that way. A quick no entry sign solves the issue and 2 years later we beat the scenario with 1500 guests, 50% more than required. After this comes Mel's World which starts off with 2 really nice coasters and quite a bit of path. This gives us ample space to build all the rides we need to get to the goal of 1200 guests. The launched freefall is a really good ride as it's the same size as a merry-go-round but attracts more guests. It's also nice for variety as some guests prefer more intense rides. In some places we need to raise the ground a bit in order to connect the rides to the path but that's fine. Wait, did I just place a path piece? Yes, I did. After accidentally deleting a path piece when I wanted to delete a tree, I immediately replaced it without thinking about it and didn't even notice it. It wasn't until almost a minute later when building a launched freefall that I had the sudden realization what I did. Well, time to start over I guess. Not much is different this time, except that some rides are in different places. In the place where disaster struck last time, I built three freefalls now and color them red, green and blue because I'm an epic gamer. After having built as many rides as I could I let the game run and 30 minutes later we reached the end of year 3 and beat the scenario with over 1800 guests. We have now reached the scenario that made me doubt whether this challenge was even possible in the first place and that is Mothball Mountain. The goal is 800 guests and you start with a whopping 9 path tiles. We need to squeeze almost 100 guests on every tile in order to reach the goal. We can fit a total of 6 3x3 three three flat rides and 4 stalls on this extensive path network and that's it. Every path tile has something connected to it on all available sites now. Naturally this will never get 800 guests so we need to build a lot of inaccessible rides for which I will once again use a tiny wooden coaster. The breakdowns will be annoying but they're manageable. Of course we also need entertainers as overcrowding is an understatement to what will happen if we get enough guests. 20 should be enough but we can always hire more later if we need to. While we are building tons of tiny wooden coasters the guest count steadily increases and in August year 1 we hit 800 guests with still a very high park rating. This is not too surprising considering how Millennium Mines went but I still wasn't sure if it was actually going to work. However, once again we shouldn't celebrate too soon as shortly after the guest count starts decreasing and drops below 800 again. I checked if anything was wrong and I found that 300 guests were heading for Space Rings 1 which is very close to the path but still unreachable. I don't know why in particular that one is so incredibly popular but it's probably messing up some things. After deleting it over 100 guests very quickly left the park so this definitely was an issue. The guest count does recover and we quickly make it past 800 guests again and go beyond. Even though nothing is changing in the park we keep getting periods where lots of guests leave and it took me a while to figure out why this happens. It's the rain. When it rains guests only want to go on covered rides of which there are exactly 4 in the park. I suspect that that is what causes a lot of guests to leave. Unfortunately it rains a lot in this scenario but luckily we gain new guests fast enough that over time we still do get a higher guest count. At the end of year 3 we have more than 1600 guests meaning there are over 180 guests on every single tile. This is physically impossible and every guest is constantly inside a bunch of other guests but the entertainers make sure they stay happy. God they are overpowered. From the scenario with the least amount of path to one with a lot, Pacific Pyramids. 
obviously it will be quite easy to get 1000 guests here so let's do something extra and see how many guests we can get with all this path and loads of space to build right we should be able to get over something like 3000 at the end of year one of four we already have over a thousand guests so the self-imposed goal of 3000 seems very plausible halfway to the goal at the end of year two we have almost 2000 guests so we're still going strong However, halfway year 3, at almost 2,500 guests, we suddenly start losing them and it's not difficult to figure out the cause. Overcrowding. Okay, no problem, we'll just hire more entertainers. Except we can't, as we have hit the staff limit. 30 handymen, 20 mechanics and 66 entertainers gets you to the staff limit of 116 in Rollercoaster Tycoon 1. This isn't enough entertainers to prevent overcrowding issues in a park this big. The fact that Pacific Pyramids has a lot of path is now preventing us from getting more guests. This is not a problem I ever expected to have, but I find it absolutely hilarious. Despite these issues, we still easily beat the scenario with over twice the required amount of guests. Up next is Crumbly Woods, which with 1200 guests ties Mel's World for the highest guest goal in the base game of Rollercoaster Tycoon 1. You start out with a decent park and quite a bit of path, so it's predictably not too difficult. The path layout is quite terrible and causes guests to get lost, but not enough to be a significant issue. I hired a lot of staff and set the park entry fee to free once I had built all the rides I needed, so we kinda got into a lot of debt. At the end of year 3 we beat the scenario with 70,000 euros of debt and thus a negative company value. I may be good at attracting guests, but I don't think this park could be classified as a successful business. There are only 5 scenarios left now and the first one of those is Big Pier or Paradise Pier if you're British. This scenario is entirely over water and you own no land, instead it's all construction rights. This doesn't hinder you very much as all it means is that you cannot get rid of the water as you can still build directly on top of it. With the path all being 2 units above the water we cannot build flat rides here as there is no way to connect them to the path network. It's all going to have to be tracked rides where we can build the station wherever we want. Actually, no. When I started building the junior coaster I was positively surprised that the default build height was 2 units above the water level which is on the same level as the path. This is weird as earlier in Trinity Island it was only 1 unit. Maybe this has to do with it being construction right but a quick test in Bumbley Beach shows that this isn't the case as here it gets built directly on top of the water. This leads me to the conclusion that scenarios can have different default height values for building over water. This is often zero but it can be different if that's helpful such as Trinity Islands 1 and Paradise Piers 2. This is another brilliant detail I had no idea about until now, Chris Sawyer was truly a genius. Other than this discovery, Paradise Pier was completed fairly uneventfully. I had some ferris wheels drowning guests, but they unfortunately broke down in the second year. The goal is only 600 guests and a park rating of 600 after 2 years and we quite easily beat that with over a thousand guests in the park. The next scenario is Lightning Peaks, which has quite a bit of path, but due to all the hills not a lot of available spaces to connect rides to. Still, this should be doable, and it likely would be if I didn't accidentally delete a piece of path again. Alright, screw it, let's see if we can still complete it. Travel between the two sections isn't entirely impossible as the chairlift is still running. Things seem to be going slow but somewhat well as in August we have 360 of the 900 required guests. However, after that it quickly goes south as in September we only have 270 guests left. This is probably not possible anymore so let's start over. The second time all goes well. I'm surprised that I managed to fit 22 spiral slides and a ferris wheel on this path system and combined with a lot of stalls they will attract enough guests. Surprisingly the weird path layout doesn't cause guests to get lost very often. It really depends on the rest of the layout whether dead ends cause issues apparently. When the end of year 3 comes we have been sitting comfortably on about 1100 guests for a while and with that Lightning Peaks is beaten. Up next is Ivory Towers, a park that's filled with puke and vandalism and has a park rating of 0. 
I will hire handyman to clean up the puke but I'm wondering if we can keep the vandalism and still beat it. With all the litter cleaned up the park rating recovers fairly quickly and reaches the required 600 for the goal before the end of March. And then we can do the same thing we've done many times before, build a whole load of flat rides until we have enough to get the 900 guests we need to beat the scenario. Actually that's boring, let's do something more exciting. How about some tracked rides, like a looping coaster for once? We have plenty of paths to connect them to and quite a large park available so this is the ideal scenario to do this in. After the looping coaster I decided to build a go-kart and this reminded me of how bloody annoying it is that you have to right click each individual tree to remove it before you can build your ride. Thank god it was changed to automatically sell scenery when you build stuff through it in Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. My third custom ride is a nice fairly sizable wooden roller coaster, not too big as we don't have a lot of money yet but that will change soon enough and I have big plans for that. In April year 2 we have about 40k in the bank and over a thousand guests but that's not enough yet. To make more money we close the park and rides and direct the guests out of the park with a few no entry signs. This allows us to make another bunch of money from new guests and we don't even have to spend anything on building more rides. In March year 3 we have over 80,000 euros saved up and it's time to start building an epic vertical drop coaster. My goal is to get an extreme excitement rating on it because, well, why not? The advantage of the vertical drop coaster is that you can build interlocking vertical loops which give a massive excitement bonus. Except, hang on, we don't have them available? Right, I forgot that in Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 you have to specifically unlock a lot of special elements. It might take quite a while to get it so we'll have to make do without. A lot of track later the design is done and we're ready to decorate it. A ride next to it for the synchronization bonus, some little bushes near the station for the scenery boost and some path for the path bonus. Wait, we can't place path. Luckily I remembered that just in time not to ruin this run. To still get that bonus I'll simply alter the ride a bit to go next to and above the already existing path instead. This gets us very close to 10 excitement and now all we need is a vertical loop around the track to get it to an extreme excitement rating of 10.26. With this epicness we easily complete the goal and are ready to move on to the penultimate scenario, Rainbow Valley. This is quite a tricky one as there are two restrictions, you are not allowed to remove trees and you can also not alter the terrain. Both of these hinder us quite a lot here, there already isn't much path and there's even fewer level bits of path that we can connect entrance and exit buildings to. Add these restrictions on top and there will be extremely few spots left to build rides. We can fit two spiral slides here and that's it for flat rides. However we can build a wild mouse coaster next to it as on tracked rides we can build stations that are not on the ground. This will be useful to keep the guests that like higher intensity ratings in the park for a little bit longer. If we're clever and use two stations we can build a second wild mouse coaster right here. Except that doesn't work as in Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 you still need both an entrance and an exit building on all stations stations. Well at least we can place a newly unlocked ferris wheel there. There are two more rides we can build and both of them are chairlifts. They usually have two stations but that's not a requirement and you can operate one with just a station and nothing else. The excitement rating will be literally 0.00 but it does work. For stalls there is no shortage of space but for the rides this is it. Obviously we will need to build quite a few disconnected rides to raise the soft guest cap otherwise we will never get to the thousand required guests to beat the scenario. Spiral slides are nice and small so that's my ride of choice here. Later we unlock the launched freefall so I will build a bunch of those as well just in case it helps keeping the thrill seekers around. Very annoyingly these rides break down a lot so eventually I decide to replace them all with boat hires as those cannot break down. Stalls also cannot break down and still attract 15 guests each so let's build 33 ice cream stalls to attract the fanatical frozen food fetishists. This is enough to get us comfortably over 1000 guests and even enough to get over 1000 guests that are complaining about overcrowding. Despite all the complaints we do beat the scenario and now we're ready for the final challenge, 
Thunder Rock and my god this is one hell of a finale. The scenario consists of a massive rock in the middle of a desert and to beat it you need to get 900 guests in 4 years. Now this goal is not particularly difficult as we've seen before, especially considering all the space we have available next to the path, so let's make it more interesting. Let's do Pacific Pyramids round 2 and see how many guests we can get. There is less path in this one so we should be able to get a high enough entertainer density for this to work. And so we start building rides. Down below and on the inside of the path on top of the rock there is loads of space for flat rides while on the outside we can build roller coasters. Often it takes quite a bit of finagling to get the station lined up properly as there is no land under it but eventually we can always make it work. If we use short stations and make them all launched, there is space for dozens of these coasters, which means we don't need to build any unreachable rides. At the start of year 2 we have built quite a few coasters and have amassed about a thousand guests, which is a good start. Money is somewhat tight, so we might as well build a few micro coasters to make sure the soft guest cap is high enough. Halfway year 2 we unlock the corkscrew coaster, which provides some welcome variation. It also has a launched mode and gives us the option of using corkscrews. I'm not exactly sure what the values are in Rollercoaster Tycoon 1, but in RCT 2 the corkscrew attracts 100 guests as opposed to the looping coasters 95, so it might also be slightly better in that regard. And of course we can now build the iconic micro corkscrew coaster, the best micro coaster in the game. At the start of year 3 we have over 2100 guests, which is great progress, but once again this is where it's all going to pot. There is a lot of puke and I'm having to fire some entertainers in order to be able to hire more handymen to deal with it. That's not where this ends, as this puke causes a lot of vandalism. I could hire some security guards to prevent that, but I would need at least 10 of them and probably more for that to be effective and I can't afford to give up that many handymen or entertainers. It really is the staff limit of 116 that is the problem here. We have plenty of rides and shops with loads of variety and all of them are connected to the path. 10 mechanics are enough to keep them operating, so there are 106 spots left. We need at least 70 entertainers to fully keep the guests happy, but that only leaves 36 handymen, which really isn't enough. With Rollercoaster Tycoon 2's limit of 200, I could just hire another 40 of both and there would be no issues at all, but 116 just isn't enough. Honestly, I'm really surprised that I need this many handymen. Guests are puking so fast everywhere and it's getting cleaned up really quickly but it's still enough to cause vandalism and litter issues. For a while I tried keeping up with it but I just couldn't. I didn't want to spend a full hour constantly replacing vandalized benches and bins so in the end I just gave up and let the game run until the deadline. With this the guest number settles around 2500 which is still the highest we have beaten any scenario with in this run. And with those guests we beat Thunder Rock, the final scenario. So the answer to the question, can you beat Rollercoaster Tycoon without building path, is yes, you can. Some scenarios were easy, while others such as Trinity Islands and Rainbow Valley provided quite a challenge, but we made it through all of them. If there's one thing I have learned is that I was entirely wrong about entertainers in this video I made a few years ago. They are incredibly overpowered as a lot of things that kill your park rating only do so because they lower the happiness of your guests. Overcrowding is the biggest example here. If you keep your happiness high with entertainers it has zero impact on anything and you can have 200 guests per tile without any issues. To learn more about how entertainers exactly work, click right here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.